Yo, so um, I'm just gonna say this quickly before the video starts. I'm doing this for a school project, so that's why the video may be a bit different from my usual videos. So yeah, the school project was on um, uh, the hero's journey, and I decided to do the hero's journey on Spider-Man 3. In the first part of the hero's journey, there is the status quo. This is basically where the hero currently is in the story. So for the status quo for Spider-Man 3, it would be basically that, at this point in the movie, Spider-Man is at his best, you know, he's very popular in New York. So for the second part of the hero's journey, that would be the call to action, or call to adventure. And for the sake of Spider-Man 3, I, I'm mo most certain that the call to action is when he learns that Sandman killed his uncle. Because this is w what really sets off his kind of arc. Well, like, it kind of like leads into like what he does with the black suit. So that's why I think the moment when he learns Sandman killed his uncle is the call to adventure. Originally, we thought that this man, Dennis Carradine, was your husband's killer. We were wrong. What? Turns out Mr. Carradine was only an accomplice. The actual killer is still at large. What are you talking about? This is the man who killed your husband. In part three of The Hero's Journey, it's usually the refusal of the call or acceptance in some cases, and in the case of Spider-Man 3, it is acceptance of the call, like, he doesn't really, like, deny the call, he is willing to go after Sandman, it's just that Mary Jane does tell him, I would say, one part of the refusal of the call is that sometimes it could be someone else trying not to get them to accept the call, so I would say it kind of falls into that category where Mary, J Mary Jane basically says not to do anything he would regret. I'm not here about what happened at dinner. Just please open up. Aunt May called me. She told me about what happened. She's worried about you. I'm worried about you. Don't be. I'm fine. Well, I don't want you to do something stupid. Like try to find my uncle's killer? And do something you'll regret. So for part 4 of the hero's journey, it's not really like a part of it, but it basically asks who their mentor mentor character is. And in my opinion, in the sake of Spider-Man 3, there's kind of two mentors in my opinion. The first one being obviously Uncle Ben, because it's a very big reason why these why the character even does what he does because of what Uncle Ben. And the second mentor in my opinion, I would probably say is Aunt May, because she's kind of like the word, word of wisdom, like she kind of like helps them through things. So yeah, I'll probably show her like a clip or two, sh proving my point so, with some of these. Peter, what is it? It's MJ. I'm gonna ask her to marry me. Oh, Peter! Oh! A man has to be understanding and put his wife before himself. Can you do that, Peter? Yeah, I think I can. And then you have my blessing. Oh, I hope you've considered a proper proposal to make it very special for Mary Jane. Do something she'll never forget. This. So for the fifth part of the hero's journey, we have the first threshold, as it is called, and this is where they kind of where the story kind of really starts. And in the case of Spider-Man Three, the first threshold is when is like right when he gets the symbiote. Right when he gets the symbiote, he goes and kills Sandman. And in my opinion, that's the first threshold, because that kind of starts the whole real plot of the movie. Mm -hmm. 
So for the sixth part of the hero's journey, it is not really like a part of it, but it basically just lists off who's their friends, who's their allies, and who's their enemies. So in the case of Spider-Man 3, allies slash friends would be Mary Jane, Aunt May, Harry Osborn, and technically un Uncle Ben in a way, but not really. And for enemies, we have Sandman, Venom slash Eddie Brock, the new Goblin slash Harry Osborn. For the seventh part of the hero's journey, we have the low point, or basically when the hero is at their lowest point. Basically, like, they've hit rock bottom. It's like, everything's going against them. So, from what I was at, from what, when I watched the movie, what I was able to pick, pick out was the low point, is I would say it's when he shoves Mary Jane because, and gets rid of the black suit. Because at this point, he's reached a point where like he's gotten so bad is that he's actually now hurting the people he once you know loved and that's bad for obvious reasons and also the fact that he gets rid of the black suit for the eighth part of the hero's journey we have the climax or like the final battle and in Spider-Man 3, the climax slash final battle is when Venom has kidnapped Venom and Sandman have kidnapped Mary Jane and taken them to take took her to the construction site. So now Spider-Man has to befriend the new goblins slash Harry Osborn to go save Mary Jane and defeat Venom and Sandman. For the, um, uh, the ninth part of the hero's journey, we have the resurrection, or basically the point where the hero basically almost dies. And in the case of Spider-Man 3, the resurrection would be somewhere during, at that one point in the climax when he's been defeated. He's like about to be killed by, he's being like held down by Venom and Sandman is just hitting him. And he's, just, he's about to die. And then, he, the way he comes back from it is basically New Goblin, his friend, that for the past three movies have his friends have been like hating him because of something that happened in the first movie because he thinks he killed his dad. His friend, they finally forgive each other and they are able to make amends and save Mary Jane. Like just in the nick of time. A couple minutes ago wouldn't have been so bad either. What are you gonna do? For the tenth and final part of the hero's journey, we have the redemption slash atonement. And in Spider-Man 3, the redemption slash atonement, there's two instances of this. The first instance is when I'm a uh, Harry Osborn. His friend is basically dying, and they finally forgive each other. And for the second instance, and in my, in my opinion, one of the best scenes in the movie, is the forgiveness scene where um, he, he corners Sandman, and Sandman basically tells him the truth, he tells him what actually happened to his uncle, and Spider-Man forgives Sandman. And that's it. That is the hero's journey in Spider-Man 3. I hope y'all enjoyed.